Good morning uh, from here in Queensland. Someone raised their hand. I'm sorry, I don't know what to do about that. If you have something to say, please do it on the chat. There's a phone number here. I'm sorry, I don't have your name. So um, thank you. What we'll do today is Richard and I will have a conversation and in the last 20, 15 minutes, we'll open it up for questions. So if you have a question in the meantime, just whack it in the chat and we'll deal with it at the end. Hopefully we'll get to everybody's questions. Let me introduce myself. I'm Judith Richards. I'm the creator of TRTP, the Richards Trauma Process. And I am delighted to hang out this morning with my dear friend Richard Fay, psychotherapist, counsellor. Um, I'm on the Gold Coast in Queensland. Richard is in Brisbane. Welcome to you wherever you are in the, in the world. Richard, would you like to just tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, I'm a uh, father and grandfather. I have grandchildren somewhere else in the house that my office is located right now. Um, beautiful grandkids. I've uh, been married for 40 years. I was the CEO of the Centre for Men and Families, which is a not-for-profit charity that helps men in crisis. Um, I've been a psychotherapist for the last 15 years, and I have been doing TRTP for the last five years. All right. Thank you for that. <laughs> Short and sweet. And I'm Judith Richards, the creator of TRTP. TRTP is a three-step process that resolves trauma-related issues, anxiety, depression, PTSD, etc., cetera, uh, quickly, effectively, and safely. It was born out of my own ridiculous life journey through extreme trauma, ending up in very severe CPTSD breakdown, several personalities, living in hallucinations, the usual thing. And I had to find a way through, and the result is TRTP. Um, Richard, you said I know exactly what to do. We were talking; you, know, you were talking about your clients. I know exactly what to do. Please explain. Clients come to us desperate for help. They come to us often with a shopping list of problems. Uh, you know, my marriage is falling, my relationship's falling apart, I can't pay the bills, uh, I, I want to die, I want to kill myself, it, it's endless. And it can be quite bewildering. And while we are trained, if you work in this field, to calm people, ground people, we often feel overwhelmed at the number of issues that clients present to us, usually in the fields of addiction, stress, anxiety, depression, trauma, grief. <clears throat> and they manifest in relationships and in their working life and their whole existence. We live in an ocean of trauma. We don't call it trauma because we don't think it's PTSD, and it probably isn't PTSD for the most part, though sometimes it is. Most often, it's just what we tend to call, you and I, Judith, and many others, garden variety trauma, the kind of, excuse the French, shit that, that people grow up with where they are not safe. They don't know they're not safe because it's their normal Often they replace some safe with numb so they don't feel. And they use all kinds of mechanisms to numb themselves. And as a therapist, even with all the training that I've got, and I've got a lifetime of it, uh, it can still feel very overwhelming. When I, As soon as I train in TRTP, it, in the most elegant and profound way, simplified, crystallized, focused, Everything that a client presents that I can now, within minutes of getting the homework the client sent me, which we send out to them shortly before we start the process, within minutes, I know their interior world. I can speak back to them and clients say to me, how do you know me? Do you have some crystal ball? How do you have insight? How do you know the exact language that's going on in my head? How do you know what I heard as a child over and over and over? How can you identify exactly what the problem is? And I would simply say, you don't need to know. Um, actually, they've given me everything. All I need to do, because TRTP teaches me how to, reframe everything they give me in a way that elegantly meets them where they hurt most and take that pain away in three sessions. It is strangely, uh, just yesterday, I had, I had uh, three clients and saw prof profound outcomes.
from the most distressing stories. The most distressing stories. I'll share one briefly, and you won't know who it is. It's just someone somewhere in the world. Wakes up on Christmas morning as a six-year-old and feels the Christmas stocking at the end of their feet. And inside that Christmas stocking are potatoes. Why? Because mum and dad said, if you're a naughty boy, you'll get potatoes. Siblings got all these presents. Now, that's just a story. Do you know that that dear person has gone through decades of life with heartache and pain and feeling like they don't matter? And at the end of yesterday, they were glowing. And I could repeat that. That's my life. That's my professional life now. The most sad. And clients said to me, you must be so, so rewarded seeing these outcomes. I said, I am. That's why I'm still working. Otherwise, I'd, I'm 65 in a few months. I'd retire tomorrow. But I find such satisfaction in what I do. And it's almost entirely because of TRTP. Thank you, Richard. And you mentioned the homework. Can you tell us a little bit? Tell people here, what is this homework? Service Homework asks a whole lot of really succinct questions around their experiences growing up because most of the problems happen in the first 15 years of life because of brain architecture and the way the brain develops, because we're small and the world is big, because we can't make sense of anything because we have no backstory. We, we are, so, and they, there's a saying that the child parents the adult because the child came first. And if the child had a bad experience, my goodness, you're not being parented by a very helpful energy because that child is running scared. So this, this homework, the first couple of pages, it's a whole lot of questions around their childhood. Then we ask some questions around the worst things that ever happened in their life. We don't send this out until a week before because clients can get triggered by it. And so they know a week before we're about to deal with that. It's going to all go away. It's the only part. It, in fact, it is the only part of the entire process where a client might feel uncomfortable. The only part is actually telling their own story in, in a few pages. And it takes them maybe an hour to fill out. And then we deal with those distressing events through the process. And then, of course, we ask the things that they don't want in their life and the things they do want. Why? Because that pinpoints exactly where we're going to take them <clears throat> yeah. from and to. And so it's a blueprint. And, you know, you, you could see a client for 10 years and end up with a, a folder this large, this thick of uh, interventions and understandings and all the things they tell you. But TRTP brings it down to a few pages. Yes, it saves a lot of time and it saves a lot of distress for the client. It's just that list the top 10 to 12 most distressing events. Let's take away the word trauma because we think yes. major catastrophes, war, <clears throat> natural disasters, etc. Well, I told you a story this, this morning, just a minute ago, about that Christmas stocking, and that was a trauma, though we just call it distress. Yeah, yeah. So just list the top 10 to 12 most distressing events, the age you were, who was there, um, and the name of the event. Yep. What happened with about 10 words? Yeah, and so it gives us a snapshot of the person's life. And with those earlier questions, you know, describe mum, three adjectives, describe dad. What was the vibe in the household? Um, and, and can I just dive in there? Because one of the things that our clients are used to doing if they've been going to therapy for any kind of period of time is ritually reenacting their trauma by telling their story over and over and over to therapist after therapist after therapist, and they just get re-traumatised. And, in fact, it normalises their experience of trauma as in this is my existence my identity is to talk about my crappy life trtp doesn't do that we in fact do the exact opposite i said say to clients every time i only need a very brief detail i don't need the whole story i don't need it to deal with it we don't as therapists if you have the right tools yes this is not talk therapy and we that means that means i know what i'm doing I don't get lost in it, you know, and then she said, and then he said, and then this happened, and you get lost. You get lost in the story. The therapist gets dragged down a path you never wanted to go down, and then you see the client in a fetal position or crying or distressed or numb and completely shut shut down. <clears throat> yep, so we, we don't do that. And, and no. the relief that some clients have, what, you mean I don't have to tell it again? Yes. 
Yes. What is the words you use? The worst, most distressing event in your life becomes no more than an old shopping list at the back of a sock drawer. Yeah. With the same amount of emotion attached, rice, (laughs) coffee, tea. Yeah, boring. And that's how you know that you're done. Yes. So you know exactly what to do. How did you come to TRTP, Richard? Well, it's a bit of, uh, if you know the movie When Harry Met Sally, it's a little bit of that. (laughs) Um, I'm in supervision with a bunch of other therapists. One of the others who's also a trainer in this work, dear David Clough, um, uh, five and a half years ago started talking about his client outcomes and in supervision. Now, if any one of you here listening goes to supervision, you'll know that supervision is where we talk about our client challenges. Well, he was saying, well, I had that challenge, but that client's well now. And I had this challenge, but that client's well now. And I looked across at him. And if you're not from Australia, you have to get used to the fact that we have a tall poppy syndrome and anyone starts talking about successes, we tend to get very threatened and we shut them down. And so I had a dismissive attitude, whatever, as if. I had an as if go off in me, but it bugged me. So I took it to my therapist and my my, my supervisor one-on-one. And my supervisor said, well, maybe you need to investigate. And I said, no, not investigating. This is garbage. This is a this is a, a raw, this is rubbish. But it wouldn't leave me alone. And so I made an inquiry and within uh, not much time I was enrolled and I did the training. Still quite skeptical, but then a penny dropped in the middle of the training and I went, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. And well, uh, I think 300 clients later. I had a, a waiting list that went out about two or three weeks. It now goes up at about five months. Yeah. And my books are Why is that? <laughs> because the best advertising any of us ever have is word of mouth. We, we simply have client outcomes. Clients are going to tell people when they have extraordinary outcomes. And they don't even have to. But what happened to you? you? You're different. You look 10 years younger. I even saw it last week. A client in the third session walked into my room and they looked 10 years younger. Mm-hmm. And I go, tell me what's going on. But one of the, one of the um, therapists I supervise, this is just crazy. She, her hair had gone straight and limp and like she couldn't do anything with her hair. And she'd had a life of trauma. She did TRTP. I'm not telling you this is normal, but it happened. Her hair went back to its curly state she had when she was a little girl. It is weird, the physical manifestations when somebody is liberated from their pain and distress. The Facebook group for fibromyalgia sufferers in Brisbane started sending a steady stream of people with chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia to me because clients kept getting well. And sometimes they wouldn't even tell me. They'd just tell all the the people they knew with that. Now, of course, TRTP is not primarily designed to deal with these issues. It deals with them intentionally as a secondary issue. The primary issue is the trauma that created that problem because the body is in such fight, flight, freeze state constantly that naturally diseases result in long-term diseases like those and others, many others. Hmm. A migraine sufferer who would have 25 migraines Hmm. a month gets one every three months now, healed. Yeah, and Bessel van der Kolk in his seminal book, The Body Keeps (laughs) a Score, talks about the connection between trauma and fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, lupus, migraines. Um, Yeah, it's just what happens. So it can be even um, physical issues that a client hasn't told us about. They come back and say, well, that's cleared up and yes. we haven't even addressed it. Return yes. the whole system to calm. I say TRTP is like a physiological reboot. It's not simply memory reprocessing. No. No. It is so much more than that. It's a complete physiological reboot of the system, like a factory reboot, not just a reboot, turn it off and on, but take the the device back to how it was before anything happened. The autonomic nervous system, which regulates the entire body, returns to calm. 
and it's that way now. It self-regulates from there on, as it was meant to do in the first place. And it's like the frog in the kettle. The water heats up. You don't even know. I didn't know. I'm, I myself had trauma, and I didn't know that I didn't grow up in a calm state. My parents didn't split up. They were together. They loved each other most of the time, but it wasn't good. And of course, it's only when you know the alternative to it, you go, oh my goodness, that wasn't healthy. So anyway, in my supervision group, I trained in it, having David trained in it. And then, as you know, Judith, um, Judy Burns and Felipe and I, I, Janet and Rob and basically every everyone in that supervision group have trained in TRTP because we kept on hearing the results. And so now this little group that had nobody now has everyone as TRTP therapists. You, you, it becomes irresistible. As happens. <laughs> hmm. As happens. Um, yes. So I'll have what he's having, and I do, and I do, and I, I need to add this, and I'm, I'm, I'm not going to tell the exact words I was told by one of the researchers, but I am going to say this. I have been involved in a research project with the University of Melbourne for the last 18 months. This is around TRTP, people. Around TRTP, where 20 of my clients who consented to being part of the process, who had demonstrable trauma, in other words, DAS and PCL5 tests said, yes, they have trauma, and they're the age of consent, over the 18, over the age of 18. We took them through the process with me. And one of the researchers told one of the other researchers, um, not in as many words, but with far more flourish, these results are very promising. Now, the exact words were considerably more, uh, as I've told Judith, but I can't repeat them, uh, thrilling. But compelling, I think, is the word. And, of course, more research is coming because this is inevitable now. Once this research gets out, this therapy will be seen around the world as a blueprint for how to treat people with childhood attachment trauma and PTSD. Yes, thank you, Richard. So it's um, don't hold your breath, people. These major research projects take so long. It's taken us seven years to get ethics approval. <laughs> so um, it will come in the fullness of time. But we have another research project that will uh, happen before that, which is Rosemary Boone, who's a leader in the world of neurofeedback and a psychologist, um, can look at a particular type of EEG <coughs> and see this person's been through a lot of trauma. The brain changes totally predictably in function and structure with big trauma. And so you can look at an EEG and go, oh, yes, those parts of the brain have down-regulated, those have up-regulated. Yes, typical PTSD, typical trauma. And so she's um, taken some uh, EEGs before and after with clients with um, pretty severe PTSD showing trauma brain, normal brain. So we're looking forward to that. You know, I'm, I'm talking about this because people are always saying, well, where's the, where's the research? Well, it takes time and mm. it takes money and we're on our way. We're on our way. And so, Richard, what were the changes in your own life since doing coming into this world of TRTP and doing your own work in TRTP? And, of course, with every client, we do the work again ourselves. I think that's the best part about it for me is that every client I take through the process, um, it, it affects me, it impacts me. So I, I once had a psychologist say to me that, you know, if only – only 5% of the mud of the client's life sticks to you every time you see a client. Well, within 20 clients, you've got 100% of someone's mud sticking to you. And I have already been through burnout once, 15 years ago. I never want to go there again. <clears throat> and I am wired to care. And I dare say TRTP is most effective for practitioners who actually care about their clients, who mm -hmm. just don't want process but really have compassion. But I've discovered that there's a long, there's a big difference between sympathy and empathy and a big difference between empathy and compassion. Empathy, feel with the client. Sympathy, feel for the client. Compassion, have a place you're going to take the client that's better than where they are. <clears throat> and so my journey through it 
has been one of being energized. It's pretty obvious, I think, if you listen to me. Energized. I do take, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm not apologetic for this, I take roughly 10 weeks off a year and I, I have holidays. I have, I'm about to go to Tasmania for a week. I'm going to England for five weeks. I'm going to Uluru in the middle of the year. I'm going to, um, to other uh, country, New South Wales for a holiday. I'm going, I've got holidays lined up. I'm going to walk the Camino next year in Spain. TRTP is helping fund it. But because, you see, what TRTP tells me to do is to live my own life because it's precious and wonderful, much as I'm inviting my clients to live their lives. And if I see my clients walk out in freedom, and, and I said to a client this week, I said, it's a little bit like a teacher when you get your best students and then they go on to the next grade or leave the school and you feel a bit of grief, a bit like, goodbye, Mr. Chips. A client, and he hugged me on Monday. He said, I'm going to miss you. You have changed my life. And I said, this is the only bad part of TRTP is I've got to say goodbye to you and say, go live your life because you're a joy to work with. And he was, and he is. And I get that experience. Yeah. Um, it's, it's quite wonderful. So, and, and I'm not going to lie, TRTP is not, it, it's easy as far as process. Sorry, it's simple, simple as far as process, but it's not easy because I throw myself in to the work because I know what I'm doing. So I'm not reluctant or hesitant going, oh, what am I meant to do here? I'm not sure. I better check my conceptualization a bit more and test it, take it to supervision, try this, try that, titrate everything so it goes so slowly like a glacier. Why? Because I don't want a client tipped into their trauma. So I'm going to be really careful. That's and that, And I have worked with clients for 12 years with complex trauma inching my way like a snail through the process and it's exhausting now trtp means that i throw myself fully into every client who walks through my door my energy predicts theirs why because i know where i'm taking them and i know i can see that sets up the whole process that's the most important thing the moment they walk through my door i say i've got you and you're finally safe now, safe with me, because I know where I'm taking you, and it's good. And you watch them, they go, ah, at last. It's sometimes psychotherapy is like you go to a surgeon and the surgeon says to you, how would you like me to perform this surgery? Because, you know, I'm really not 100% sure. I don't want to uh, go against your, your free will here. I don't want to do what you don't want me to do. So you tell me how to do the surgery. You'd run for the hills. Sure would. And yet we go to therapists and the therapist says, and this is where I, and, and I, I, I get Carl Rogers, who's the father of um, person-centered therapy. I love a lot of his work. But in this regard, I find that unhelpful, which is you're one step to the side and one step behind the therapist or the client who's walking in fog and you're walking in fog with them and you're asking them, what do they notice? What do they see? I find that ultimately to be very frustrating and it, it's energy sapping. Why? Because it's the blind leading the blind. And while I might have some awareness, it's so slow. TRTP is the opposite. It's I'm I'm it's I'm up here. Take my hand. Come with me. And because it's directive, I find that practitioners who are uncomfortable taking the lead, when they even know what they're doing, will not <laughs> excuse me dive in. And so we equip you. We give you everything. I mean, literally everything. It's, it's, there's nothing at the end of the process, all the supports you get, the, the workshop, the way the whole thing's constructed. You know exactly what you're doing. So there's no reason not to dive in. And we, in, in fact, of course, there's lots of opportunities for you to, to, to practice this with other students through the process. So by the time you get a client in your room, as I did, I had 10 clients in within the first month of doing the training. And then um, I'm diving in, I'm learning very quickly. Now, that's what we would want you to do as much as you humanly can. Um, get 
clients moving fast, but the process itself will train you, equip you fully. Nothing's left out. Nothing's, I've done more PD than you can imagine at 64, more PD than most people could ever want to do. And I have bookcases with dust collecting on all the manuals that I never opened again. Because I sit there going, well, how am I going to use that? How, how do I actually apply that? Oh, that might be something I use. No, I wouldn't use that. Oh, yeah, that's a bit of an idea. I'll think about that. I just recently did some PD in ACT therapy, which I think is great. It's a CBT uh, acceptance commitment therapy. Most people here know ACT. And it's great. And maybe 5%, 10% of it I thought I might use occasionally. TRTP, 100% I will use from day one. 100%. And nothing collected dust. Every single, in fact, quite the opposite. I wear it all. Any manual I printed out, or I got printed, I I wore out and I had to reprint it and change it and update it. Why? Because I was I was using it on a daily basis. Mm. Yeah. Thank you, Richard. What about for those clients? You know, there's always a few that don't get there. Yes. Tell us about your experience with that. Around about 9% of my clients don't get there. Mm -hmm. And it's good that you ask the question. And I've got to tell you, it bugs me because now my normal is clients get transformation. Mm -hmm. So I'm probably more bugged than ever. I go, what's going on there? I can almost to a person identify why. There are a bunch of reasons this won't work. It won't work with a narcissist, a psychopath, mm -hmm. a sociopath. I wouldn't even try. I have occasionally. They've fooled me. I get through the process and went, well, there it is. Didn't see that one coming. Yes. It won't work if they refuse to leave or go back into a toxic environment, an abusive relationship. And I won't start these days. I just simply won't. <clears throat> Recently, I had a poor outcome. And he refused to challenge the, the partner he was living with who was expecting him to do everything. <clears throat> and he went back to doing everything. And he got completely exhausted. And I said, well, you have a choice. If she won't change, why are you staying with her? Now you know you don't deserve to be treated like shit. Now why would you stay there? And, and he said, well, that's my choice, isn't it? Ah, you know it's your choice, don't you? A client just this morning heard me on the radio. I have him on the radio around the traps. And they heard me on the radio and they said what a helpful recording it was. And they said, I don't know that TRTP actually worked for me, but now it's changed my whole life. Everything's changed. He said, I'm a slow cooker. And um, I, I thought he was in the 9% for whom it didn't work. He said, everything's changed. Everything's it's changed. just <clears throat> percolated through his life. And it's worked its way right through. Now, he saw me twice after we finished, and he was getting better every time. But then the last time I saw him about nine months ago, I thought, well, he didn't want to make another appointment, so off he goes. And he messages me this morning and said, it just got deeper and deeper and deeper. So sometimes when it doesn't work, you've got to wait a while. Sometimes it doesn't work. Why? Because the client's environment was so toxic. And sometimes it's because they've got something like sociopathy or, um, or narcissism. Um, I will not do it with someone with a uh, acquired brain injury that would inhibit their capacity to process it. So obviously there are some basic limitations. Um, or if a client doesn't really want it, but then again, we wouldn't start. We have all these tests in the process to evaluate a client's readiness for the process. Mm. And strangely, and this is going to sound odd, the clients that are most ready are the ones that excuse the French again because I have no other word. Trauma language is, is raw. The clients that I most love are the ones that are totally fucked up and they know it and they're done with it. And they just, they're, they just, <clears throat> yep. They can't live. They go, I do anything to change. I, um, I remember one client and she was, she attempted suicide the day, the day before she came to see me. And her husband kept, kept her alive for 24 hours. She came in through the process and it changed everything for her. They're the clients you, it, the, 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 more, the more distressed, the more completely imploding a client is, 
usually, and the more they, they want to change and they're done with it. Now, those two, the second thing has to be in place too. They have to want to change. Not believing they can or have any idea of what that looks like, but just want, not want this anymore. They're the ones that are most ready. But we have, a, I have a measure, like it, I do a DAS. If they've got elevated anxiety, stress or depression, you stop and ask yourself why. And if, it, if a DAS score was done again a month later and it's still high, why? Oh, no, no, I'm fine. I had a great childhood. Really? I had a client say to me, and she goes, I've had the worst week ever. What happened? I said, she said, well, I forgot to bring the garbage, forgot to take the garbage bin out, and now it's full of garbage and it stinks. My son came home with a C, and then our tax bill came in. I feel like everything's against me. Now, what I hear is life. But you know that client has trauma. Hmm. Why? Because I deserve to have a terrible life is running in their unconscious 24-7. And so when normal things happen, it overwhelms them. It floods them. Yep. Yep. And as you said, some people are not candidates for TRTP. It's not for everybody. It's not fairy dust. It is not fairy dust. And we don't make people euphoric. We make people self-regulating. Now, they might be euphoric at the beginning. Uh, sorry, at the end of the process. They, they might be. But I say to them, no, no, no. In, in, in a, I do this in the, in the third session because it's just three sessions. In the third session, in my script, I go, now you can feel everything. Your grief, your pain, your loss, your yearning, your longing, beauty, wonder, mystery, imagination, creativity, energy, tiredness, exhaustion. You can feel it all now. You can feel it all fully knowing that you get to choose. In other words, I open them up to living life more fully, not living life at some point where everything is happy all the time. That's Disneyland. That's not real. But experiencing life more richly because trauma is not in the way. And after setbacks, after distress, because the whole system has re been recalibrated, the system goes back to calm after big distress. Hmm. rather than staying up there in fight, flight, freeze all the time, it comes back. And we even explain and show that with a diagram, what that looks like. They hmm. automatically reset to calm. That's their baseline. It's always there now. Um, <clears throat> their boss has a go at them and they stand up to their boss and excuse, says, excuse me, you seem terribly distressed. What's your problem? I stay calm. I've even done it on myself and uh, – because uh, there was a, a hidden trauma which um, around blood tests. <laughs> and I applied TRTP to myself before a blood test. And you have to understand, when I say anxiety around blood tests, it's, it's like throw up, pass out, veins collapse. It's a train wreck. And that's right. my whole life. And I always thought I'm just a wuss, not realizing there was a trauma when I was seven years old around a blood test. I did my own TRTP. I did it to myself. And went and had a blood test, and it was effortless. It was, it, it's really beautiful to be able to, because I didn't deal with blood tests when I went through the process, and I did actually do TRTP to learn about it because I wanted to learn about it. Not that you have to do TRTP yourself to learn about it. Uh, you will, uh, as in, as a, as a client, but it changed even that. In fact. I felt comfortable having a blood test, not just not distressed. I felt comfortable, which is hard to describe. On you, Richard. <laughs> and the phobias that um, a client may not speak about during the, the sessions, and then they come back and say, I, I don't have that issue anymore. I didn't yes. even mention it. Uh, because all the distress is collapsed. <clears throat> So um, it's an interesting process. I think we might be onto something, Richard. I think we might. Even some conditions which are identifiable as neurological conditions are amplified by trauma, OCD, ADHD, um, and others. Um, these can be amplified, predictors of trauma, um, dyslexia. These can be both predictors of trauma and amplified by trauma. So clients end up needing medication and so on. 
as a result of TRTP clients now, they don't change their medication with me because I am not going to write scripts or do that. And I actually have, <laughs> this is how powerful TRTP is. I have in my intake form, I agree, I will not change my medication yes. without talking to my psychologist, psychiatrist, or GP. <clears throat> That's uh, a given. Why? Because I had a client who had such a profound outcome, they were on uh, 200 milligrams of Lexapro or something, and they went cold turkey because they felt, I don't need it anymore. And uh, of course, they had a bit of meltdown because they had withdrawal symptoms from the medication. Yep. And so I wrote it in my form and yep. people go, people say to me, why is that? Why is that there? I go, because you'll experience such transformation. You'll think you don't need your meds and you might not, but I'm not the person to change that. No, no. And you need to, uh, sometimes you need to do it slowly. Yes, definitely. Definitely. Xanax and all different things. Oh, the benzos especially. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I have on my intake form, you know, a signed agreement not to change any meds for two months <laughs> yes. and then to go to the GP, whoever. Yes. Um, <clears throat> Richard, thank you. You're very welcome. <laughs> I always enjoy our conversations. Um, you're engaged in training our trainers now. Yes. Um, PRTP. So helping them become the very best trainers they can be. So every student has the gold standard experience. Yes. Yes, indeed. And we might open it up to questions at this point. If you have a question for Richard or for myself or for both of us, just generally, type it into the chat. Don't put your hand up because I don't know what to do about that. Um, <laughs> but type it into the chat and we will endeavour to answer every question that is put up there. Um, there's a question, what about children, working with children? Richard, I don't know, I know you don't specialise in working with children. Um, I've I, taken a 15-year-old through TRTP. That's the youngest I've done. So I would not want to talk in that space. You can. Okay. I've worked with a, a lot of children. Um, for young children up to about the age of eight, uh, we teach a caregiver a parent how to work with that child. But the, I, I teach every person, student coming through TRTP, work with at least one caregiver first if you're working with a child or a teenager. Because the way I look at it is you can take a sick fish out of a sick pond, clean it up, put it in a clean pond, and that fish will thrive and grow. Take a sick fish out of a sick pond, clean it up, put it back in that toxic pond, and hey, guess what? It will get sick again. And it's very interesting that in working with some caregivers and some parents, the issues and, and dealing with their stuff, the, the child's issues somehow miraculously disappear. Mm -hmm. It's a funny thing. But with little children, we teach a parent, a caregiver, how to work with that child. It's quite easy as they're going to sleep. Um, for older children, we just do part of TRTP. Um, so that, that's a whole webinar in itself. Um, there are on the YouTube channel, TRTP channel on YouTube, there are a couple of um, videos of webinars there with some of our child specialists talking about trauma and children and what we do with that. So if that's of, of interest to you. Um, there's another question here about addiction. So. We say get clean first. Get clean first. And if you do go to rehab, come immediately, immediately to begin this work and this support. Um, now, there are levels of addiction. So, for example, if someone came to me who was drinking a bottle of wine a night, oh, that's I, I'd see them. But I'd see them when they were sober. I wouldn't see them after they'd started drinking a bottle of wine. If they smoke, if they use cannabis at night, I would see them when they're least intoxicated or affected by whatever drug they're taking. Now, mm -hmm. obviously, if they're on meth or they're on heroin or something, yes, they need to get clean. Or they're uh, full-on, uh, full-blown alcoholic. Yes, get, get, get dry, get clean first. Yes, we have um, one of our young, younger 
you, you know you're getting older when someone in their mid thirties is just a young thing. <laughs> and uh, Matt was on the on the streets at thirteen as an ice addict, and then he went through everything else. Found himself in his twenties with all his friends either dead from overdoses or murdered or in jail for murder. And he had failed rehab 17 times. No one ever asked him what happened. Mm -hmm. It was purely the physiological hold of the, of the various substances that was dealt with and never trauma. He's now very engaged in trauma work in rehab, particularly in the States. But, um, Yes, that's a whole other area. I, I go into the drug and alcohol unit at Royal Brisbane Hospital every couple of months. And I once was with a man who'd been in and out of prison because he's been trafficking um, ice and, and everything else. And, and I asked him his story and he said, I'm 42 years old. And he told me his story and he said, and this is the first time I've ever told it. No one had ever asked him his story. That's so, what is and if that? you heard, I, and what is that? What is that? Because the, the model pathologizes. TRTP does not. In fact, when a client's drinking or taking drugs, I go, of course, look at you. How clever of you to self-medicate. Yes, the self-medication is actually just numbing you, but how clever that you knew your body was in such a state of fight, flight, freeze, you had to do something just to survive. Any wonder you did with what you've been through. It takes all the shame and blame away from it. And there's not something medically wrong with you. You're not crazy. You're not evil. You've been through hell. That's why. Yeah, and let's take the pain away and recalibrate the whole system. Um, Dawn has a question. Is TRTP channel open to everyone or just those doing training? It, it's, a, it's free to everyone. Dawn, go to YouTube, type in TRTP channel. You'll find uh, a picture there of me with red glasses on. And go to that channel, go to the second page on videos. There's lots of stuff there. Um, okay, any other questions here? There's uh, one about the training. Okay. The training. Well, the training is not just open to everyone. Sorry. <laughs> um, we don't accept everyone's enrolment, um, no matter what their, someone's qualifications are. TRTP is a very particular process, a very particular way of doing things. Um, so, yes, we, we ex most of our practitioners are either mental health professionals or health professionals or coaches, that sort of thing. Um, the training is currently a 12-week program. It is intensive. It is full-on. It requires the student to throw themselves in and put what they already know on the shelf and just be open and teachable. 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 Put what you know on the shelf. Be ready for that and be ready to take a leadership position. TRTP is not collaborative. As Richard said, you don't want a collaborative surgeon. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about how we're going to do this. No, just tell me. I don't know what to do. Okay, you don't know what to do. I will take you by the hand. I know exactly what to do, which is what this webinar is about. I know exactly what to do to take you by the hand to the other side of your pain. All you need to do is listen to my instructions and follow them. I've got you and you're safe. Uh, so that training, in, it, it's uh, online learning. It's uh, face to uh, It's online live workshops. Um, it's classroom, online stuff. There's lots and lots of support. At the end of that 12 weeks training, you, it's not the end. You go into our TRTP practitioner community, which is a world of continual support. Our ethos is kindness and generosity and egos left at the door. Uh, the, the learning continues. Do you have anything to say about the community, Richard? I have experienced to be quite unusual because I don't think, well, I, I don't think, I know that there is no community for any other modality or approach to therapy I've come across. Yes, they're hit and miss, but they tend to be, uh, what happens is uh, 
therapists, uh, from my experience, tend to hold their cards fairly close to their chest because they fear they're going to lose their clients uh, to other therapists. Um, they uh, fear that people will, uh, other therapists might find fault with their work. Um, they therefore want to always look professional and in control. I've even had specialists, medical specialists, tell me that they go to conferences and everyone's ego strutting. Oh, I've, I wrote this paper. Oh, I had this outcome and so on. Mm, TRTP is the exact opposite. I can be as vulnerable and real and, and open and transparent and honest here and I'll be heard and supported and cared for and listened to. And, and given the things that I need to grow as a therapist, it, it's the opposite of that. And it is a, a very... Um, while the process isn't collaborative, the learning environment is oh, beautifully. Oh, yes. And people, people just jump in to help each other. All the time. I had a client like that. I know what to do. <laughs> All the time. And, of course, because of that, and those things are recorded and there's a Facebook page and so on, you can just search for anything and you'll find a whole lot of resources for a conversation that was had maybe two, three years ago. Oh, that's what you do in this specific situation. What do you do if you have a, a 42-year-old male with ASD whose partner is XYZ and who, as a 10-year-old, had this happen? Oh, you'll probably find it. <laughs> it gets that specific because there's now a, a treasure house of wisdom from experience. Yeah, and um, a, a community that laughs readily. And uses naughty words. Yes, and is irreverent. We are we are a wonderfully fun environment, and uh, I think that's and and that's because TRTP is about giving people back their life. And lo the world was a beautiful line in the David White poem: "The world was made to be free in. Yeah. Give up all other worlds except the one to which you truly belong." I yeah. love that line, and that's why we have fun. Yes, indeed. And I'm just going to share screen now. If you are interested in finding out more about the training, um, I'm just going to share screen and show you. This is trtptherapy.com. This is the website. This is the page you land on. Go to I'm looking for TRTP training. Book a 30-minute call. Uh, so just type in interested if you're interested in finding out more about the TRTP practitioner training program, which is comprehensive, exciting, life-changing, practice-changing, family-changing. Um, and that's the thing, Richard, you know, a lot of your clients leave and the outcome, the outcomes are visible. They're obvious. And so people say, I want what, I want what he's having. And yes. so they come to you. So, so for example, a number of our psychologists who used to depend upon GP um, ref referrals, they just have people ringing straight up saying, I want TRTP. Um, and so uh, we, we actually have people. That that's all their referrals are from GPs. That's, I already know what I want. Or even from psychiatrists in um, some cases. The, yes. The psychiatrists who have patients that dear Kim Hobson sees uh, – clients who psychiatrists don't know what to do with the trauma is horror movie trauma and i know because i supervise kim um and the psychiatrists have no idea what to do with these poor dear people um so they just send them on and say you know poor mr so-and-so you know just fix the poor bastard i've seen the emails actually saying that uh, yeah. Okay. So thank you, Janine. I'm hundred percent interested. Jane, Dawn, others. If this compels you, if this resonates with you, do something about it. Because I don't know if you've noticed the world is in a bad way. I uh, that was. That, remember, I, I said to you, Judith. Here's a problem with TRTP. Really big problem, and that is, if all my clients get well, I won't have any clients. That's what Whatever. you said initially. I, I, I did. I did in the training. D don't you see this as a problem? She burst out laughing and you said, have you looked around? Have you turned on the news? Do you have any idea yes. what happened in Sydney just this week? Oh, my goodness. What is happening right now? What is it? One in one in three girls, one in four boys is, is interfered with sexually in their childhood. In and Australia. I would say the numbers are much higher than that. That's only reported. That's only reported. 
It took me 38 years to report my own experience as a 12-year-old boy. I didn't tell a soul till I was 50. Well, now it's not a trauma, so I can talk about it because I know I, it's not, uh, not my fault. Not my fault. But it was for 38 years. Yeah, and, and so many people, you know, people that got, guys I've worked with in their 70s who've been carrying that shame and guilt and self-blame for all those years. <sighs> Finally liberated. But on that note, thank you for joining us, everybody. Go well, go gently. I hope to cross paths down the track a little way. Thank you, Richard Fay, for your time this morning. It's always fabulous to hang out with you. Great to be here. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Jane. Thanks, Janina. <laughs> See you again down the track. Thank you. Bye now.